What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and Visual, and we are back with another video. And this week, we're gonna be covering a topic that you guys voted on, and that is how to make alternative pop rock. So this is gonna be similar to acts such as like the band Camino, The Wildlife, Floor, basically those alternative acts that are kind of band dependent. Maybe they have some live drums, maybe they're very guitar dependent. And so for this video today, we're gonna be looking at a song that I produced for a band called Nightbreakers. The song is called Quarter to Midnight, and it is out, so there is a link in the description below if you actually wanna hear the song in full and then go support that band as well. In this video we're just going to cover things like what kind of sounds you're going to want for this style, um, maybe some arrangement tips, and then some of the tips and tricks that I like to keep in mind whenever I'm kind of focusing in on this specific genre. Of course as always if you have any questions just let us know in the comments down below and I'll try to clarify or answer anything that I possibly can to help you out. But without further ado let's actually hop into the project because we have a ton to cover today. All right so now we're in the project. Uh, you probably heard a preview at the beginning of the video and if you want to hear the song the full song is out so you can go check the Spotify. Uh, link in the description and then you can come back so I kind of want to focus on just the core elements of the song and then we'll work on some of the extra production stuff so I'll kind of show you the demo that they brought to me we can listen to that kind of see what they were working with and then I'll kind of just show you from the drums up and we'll just kind of build it out from there so this is the idea they kind of had And I really liked most of what they had for that. So for drums, we basically just kind of rebuilt them and then kind of just layered sounds over. So we have this main kick right here, just a pretty typical kind of trap kick. And I just wrote that in with MIDI with Groove Agent. And then we've got our main little snare. And this is where we start getting a little different from their demo because you can kind of hear here. They went just like straight trap drum. I wanted to give it a little bit of extra texture and kind of ambience. So instead I added the snare, um, the Troy Sivan snare from I think maybe our chart topper pack. It just had like this cool kind of poppy feel, almost like an island feel. And then I layered a snap over it just to give it kind of that human touch. Then of course we have the odd down hit that y'all hear me use all the time. This is from Sounds of Life. And then I just added these extra snaps on every other snare hit, something I've talked about on the channel a lot, just to kind of add some ambience and some urgency, just gives us a nice little bit of alternation. I just processed it with some H delay and then some EQ to kind of filter that out and then some reverb just to kind of uh, make sure that it was kind of ambient and spacey because I didn't need a bunch of that transient. I really just wanted it to be like a space filler. So every other hit, we just have this. So pretty much just pulled exactly from what they had in the demo, just kind of swapped out some different sounds and then just kind of layered over um, some ambient noises. All right, so right now we have this guitar. It's double tracked. I think it was just like a Taylor guitar that we mic'd up with the Slate ML1. And then I did a bunch of processing, but here's what it kind of sounded like with nothing on it. Let me just bypass the uh, kind of filter that we have opening because we do have a filter that kind of opens up on and off through this bridge or through this verse. So here's what we kind of have. And that continues through most of the song. And then we really just have that tracked twice for the left and the right. And then with all the other processing, we just have virtual mix rack for some EQ and some compression. And then I have the mic model on it. Um, I believe we used, yeah, right here, the 67. It just had a lot of mids for me, which I kind of liked in it. Threw on some verb suite to kind of put it in a room. Just didn't want it super dry. And then threw on some decapitator to give it some buzz. Throw on a bit crusher just to give it a weird little bit of ambience and then some extra compression and some extra EQ to kind of get rid of some of those kind of low mid weird kind of honky frequencies, especially once it gets filtered. So here's what we have for both of those put together. They're both processed the exact same and then that filter just kind of opens and closes throughout. Blank screen, get this beat. 
And then that mixed with the drums was pretty much all they had for their demo. They also had like this kind of ambient pad, but we got rid of that and swapped out the synths. So here's what we have with just the guitar and the drums. <laughs> The next thing we added in was this bass, and I believe this is just in Serum. Let's see if I can find the exact patch. Yeah, so this is just the fatty patch. It's from our Nashville pack, and I probably swapped it around quite a bit, but it's really just like this kind of filtered out um, kind of Moog pad. And it's kind of filtered, so we have a little bit of that attack, but nothing crazy. That mixed with the, the guitars and the drums is really the meat and potatoes. And then we just have these little wubs right here from Serum. And that's kind of on the backbeat, just kind of a little John Bellion influence on that. And then we just have this lead synth right here that I believe was Anna 2. And this is basically just doing the same exact thing as that guitar, just to add a little bit of transient and body. Kind of gives us something right up the middle, something with a little bit of attack. And uh, it just kind of blends in nicely with those harder snares that we ended up picking for the verse. So all together, that is literally it. And then we just have one main vocal and a lower octave vocal right here. So. This is the main vocal. I don't usually get like this, I promise. And if I'm being honest, I never thought we'd get this far. Now I'm staring at you through a blank screen. Get this be the real thing I can I really know for sure. I've been a little lost. And we tracked him on a Slate ML1 and then just kind of the normal suspects on this. I don't usually get like this, I promise. And if I'm being honest, I never thought we'd get And then we just did the same thing that we always do where we kind of duplicated it, turned it down an octave. And then spread it out with Waves Doubler. That was just printed to kind of save CPU. But both of those together are the only thing we have for the first half of the verse. I don't usually get like this, I promise. And if I'm being honest, I never thought we'd get this far. Now I'm staring at you through a blank screen. Could this be the real thing? I can't already know for sure. I've been a little and that is literally all for the first half of the verse. Then for the second half, we kind of build it up. This is like the pre-chorus that they have. So the melody changes, and then we start to just kind of layer up everything. So for the drums, we are pulling in an extra snare texture right here just to give us a little bit more body. And that's just, again, giving us a little bit of extra texture. And then this is where we're starting to pull in some, some hi-hats and some loops. So we have this little splice kind of I, I can't remember what pack it's from, but you can see the name right here if you want to find it on there. Has a nice little bit of movement and it's not so consistent. And then we just have a constant kind of eighth note, real hi-hat from our, our cymbals pack or our hi-hats and shakers pack or whatever. Then we have a little cashmere clap loop just to give some backbeat. And that's processed with multipass, bit crusher, and pro Q to kind of filter it out. So on multipass, we're using the drum modulator and then a bit crusher to just give us this weird kind of little texture. And then some EQ just to make sure that we're not getting any weird low end, especially after bit crushing. And then the last little loop that we have is this Foley loop right here. So they're all kind of doing the same thing just in different spots and they all come together to just be this kind of one big ambient percussive loop where it has a little bit more texture than just straight up hi-hats but it's not super messy so all the drums together now sound like this and then i guess we should go ahead and talk about the vocals next because you'll get a much better sense of what we do so the melody change right here falling i'm falling don't act like i'm so what we did was we ended up tracking that two more times, panning it out left and right. And yes, we get this question a lot. Um, when you are panning vocals and not just duplicating them with like a doubler, you do need to actually retract them so they don't phase out in the middle. So these are three separate takes of him singing this exact line. Falling, I'm falling, don't act like I'm and they're not vocal lined or anything. They are tuned a little bit, but um, Zach is just a super tight vocalist. So there's not too, too much processing going on in there. And then we have a double track of these harmonies. Once again, actually track twice.
And as you can see with the panning on this, we kind of brought it in a little bit. So it's not 100% left and right like the mains. Um, we're only like 85% just to make sure that we're not eating up too much of that side stereo space. And then we have another harmony right here just panned out like 55% left and right. And typically for harmonies and stuff like that, I'll tune them a little bit harder because I don't really need any pitch drift. Like I like a little bit of pitch drift in the main, so it just has a little bit of life. But for those harmonies, I want them as tight as possible. So a lot of the time I'll over tighten them and then just kind of scale back like 5%. And then that same low vocal. I'm falling, don't act like I'm see-through Then we still have those same acoustic guitars Falling, I'm falling, don't act like I'm see-through This feels like the first time And then the next thing we added was we added this extra little electric And that's just giving us this kind of like jumped like dotted eighth note kind of vibe on the background. It's barely in there, but it just adds a nice little bit of texture. Falling, I'm falling, don't act like I'm see -through. This feels like the first time. And then for the synths, this is where we really start layering stuff up. So we have the main kind of lead synth that's doing the same thing as the guitar and the wub still. But we also add in these mallets right here. And I believe that's just from Omnisphere. It's just like one of their little music boxes. And then we add in a pad. I know that's from Serum. It's just like a little bit of a, like a, a saw pad that's filtered out, nothing crazy. And then we have these like little flutes right here just to give us uh, like the, the main counter melody. And I know that's in Anna too. That's a preset that I made and gave away for free a while ago. I think it's called What Do You Meme? Um, and it's basically just like a pan flute in there. And then we have this extra flute layer. So again, just another example of like, this is three new elements, but technically it's only one new element because they're all doing the exact same thing. It's just to kind of build that texture and build that sound as one cohesive thing. So like if I was sending this off to mix, I would just bounce that all as one stem. So those three things become one. So we add basically that little counter melody, this kind of consistent pad. And then the last kind of key synth thing we add is just a little vocal backing. And it's literally just doing the exact same thing that Zach is doing vocally. And it was just in like the super ambient kind of serum pluck that I threw a bunch of reverb and delay on. And that's just kind of giving us a little bit of extra texture over his vocal. Falling, I'm falling, don't act like I'm see through this. And that was able to kind of let me keep his vocal nice and dry so we didn't get super wet and ambient um, because we have all of the wetness from that extra little pluck rather than throwing on a bunch of reverb on his vocal. So just kind of a cool textural thing to do. And then the only other tweak we have is the bass, which I believe is just the same pad. It's just, or the same kind of like plucky bass that we have from the verse. Um, I've just extended the decay. Same exact thing, just extended decay. Um, so we just go from this. And a lot of the time, if I wanna do something like that, I'll kind of, if I'm keeping an element the same from like the verse to the pre-chorus or the chorus to the next verse, a lot of the time I'll duplicate it so I can kind of adjust volume necessarily and not have to automate a bunch of stuff. But then I'll also kind of adjust attack and release to kind of make them just a little bit different. So texturally they feel the same, um, but they're kind of, acting a little bit differently with the track. So everything together kind of takes us from a really simple verse like this into a pre-course that we're kind of building up. Still a pretty simple arrangement. It's mainly just those acoustic guitars, that extra little electric guitar layer, and then just the, like the synth counter melody. And that's still pretty much the only thing. The big change is when we get to this course right here where we're adding a bunch of stuff. So I'll let you hear it first and then we'll kind of go over everything that changes. I don't wanna waste another minute without you.
So as you can hear, this is where we're kind of transitioning from just straight up pop to kind of the more alternative pop rock. We have some full band elements coming in. We've got a lot more guitar. We've got a live track bass and we've got some um, kind of acoustic drum samples coming in. So for the main drums, we're actually losing the main kick and snare. So we're going from this kind of electronic kick and snare to something that feels a little bit more organic. So the kick is still pretty electronic because we needed that low end punch. But we did add this top end click. And that's actually from like an actual drum sample. I believe it's from the country hits pack um, from my buddy Austin. Super, super fire pack. I'll see if I can find it and put a link in the description or update you guys on Instagram or something. Um, but super fire pack. It's like my favorite for one shot, uh, like acoustic samples. So we have this for the kick now. And then we have a snare sample from that. And this is just like a Bobinga sample that I found forever ago when I was still making metal music. It's like such a nice little layer. And then for our main snare, we just have this like snare that I printed from Slate. And then I have one more chorus snare layer. And this one's just to kind of bring some of that electronic ambience and texture back. So the main kick in the snare, we have this now. Super fat, super punchy, pretty dry, like all things considered. And then we've got some symbols right here printed from Slate Drums 5 as well. Or maybe this was Superior. I don't know. It says Superior, but I'm almost positive I swapped it to Slate. And then, of course, we still have the main hi-hat, the main clap, and the main uh, top loop. The only thing we got rid of was that kind of eighth note real hi-hat from the verse because obviously we're swapping to crashes now for this chorus. And then the only other stuff we have is like we've got a couple risers and hits. We've got this little like blinker riser that's from Sounds of Life. And then a quick little like 64th note snare fill. And I just pitched that down in Groove Agent and automated that. Then we've got the clap impact that we use in almost every video. And then a couple transitions from our disco pop pack. So we've got the clap impact that's not tonal whatsoever. It's literally just a clap with a ton of reverb printed. And then we've got this. Cool little alien kind of downshift. And then we've got these that are super tonal. So that one's up an octave and then we have the same thing down an octave. That just gives me a nice little tonal downbeat when the drums come in. So all together, um, drums come together pretty fat and sound like this. We just got one little tom hit right here on the on the dot dot. And so for their drums, they'll typically play them, record them, and then bring me kind of whatever they do. Sometimes we sample replace them, sometimes we'll use Logan's drums and just kind of build on top of that. For this song, we just want all samples because we wanted something super polished and super big. Um, but everything that's in here was played by their drummer Logan. So this is all his patterns and, and kind of his finessing on the drums. So Everything like that uh, comes together, and then we've just got the same acoustic guitar still continuing. And then the main guitars that we have come in, and that's just this double-tracked electric guitar right here. I believe this was tracked on a Gibson Les Paul standard. And then we just use guitar rig. Here is the preset. Um, it's literally just this. And then I post-processed it a lot with reverb and delay. So verb suite and then H delay. Nothing insane. It's just... Here's the, the dry. You can hear how twangy and kind of aggressive it is just without any processing whatsoever. Um, Dan just does such a good job playing it. And that gives us that really nice kind of aggressive pick tone. Double tracked, panned left and right. And we might as well cover it while we're here. We end up layering that with an extra layer for the second half of the chorus, and that just gives us a lower octave.
And I remember for this part, they had a specific reference of, I think it was Polyphia and the stuff they did with Lo-Fi, like maybe it was lit. Um, so that's kind of where we pulled the guitar tone from and it came together really, really sick. So for the guitar and the drums, we're already kind of leaning into that rock category now. And now we're gonna kind of bring in that alternative pop where we kind of bring in some of those 80s style um, pads and synths. So we have this main pad right here. That's the long drives pad that we have. It's in serum and um, it's got this nice like little pitch shift up and that's just for kind of filler. And then we have these main brass uh, stabs right here. And I believe these are both from Omnisphere. I think they're just the, either the Jupiter stabs or the Oberheim stabs in there. So we've got the first one for kind of the initial buzz and then the second one that's got a slower attack just to kind of fill that out. And then we have this cool little arp right here that's tucked really far in the back, but it kind of just gives us this nice little movement. And then we've got these two like little lead scents here. And these are both from Serum, um, and they're basically just doing the same thing that that main guitar is doing. These are from Echo Soundworks Helix. Um, again, we've said it before on the channel, but all the Echo Soundworks stuff is really, really, really good. And then this one is from Echo Soundworks X Key. So I think Shana just sent me those packs. So I figured why not break them in? And so all the synths together, we have this. So besides those main brass hits, nothing is like that noticeable or that aggressive. It's just uh, everything's kind of tucked in with that guitar to give it some extra texture. And then we've got this little flute response right here. And uh, that just kind of goes in with these little vocal backings and these little flutes right here, so. Cool little response that we did. And um, vocals are kind of similar to what we did for the main kind of arrangement for the pre-chorus. We've just kind of turned them all up a little bit, but it's main vocal up the middle, main vocal left and right, harmony left and right, harmony two left and right. And then we've just got a vocal reverb right here. Just printed with like this really big plate reverb. And then we've got two low vocals. We've got the high octave pitch down. 12 semitones, and then we've also got the low octave pitch down 12 semitones. So we're kind of getting that weird, like altered vocal on two different ranges. And then that guitar that we added. And then we're just adding in some bass and we had this electric bass that Spencer tracked, and um, here's kind of what we had. We filtered it out a bunch, but I'll kind of turn it to the DI so you can hear. Very simple. Just threw a tone on it, kind of filtered it out. I didn't really want the low end. We did the same thing, but threw on a bunch of distortion and made it super grindy. And then panned it out with monitor stereo and made it this kind of stereo tone, which was super weird, but it sounded so cool in context. And then we just have our main bass right here, which is a patch in Serum. Um, and it is from the Funk Pop pack that we've done, and it's called Offended. It's basically just this massive, like, kind of like bass stab that's got this kind of aggressive attack. And that is pretty much the whole arrangement. I don't think anything else really gets added. We more so just like swap stuff in and out. Um, so let's go see, we'll kind of show some arrangement tweaks that we've done. And then that should be it. So for the second verse, I know we drop out for a measure. I almost forgot what it feels like the feeling. Lovingly, I've been watching all the stars falling. 
yeah. So drop everything out, did this like really crazy turnaround effect. It's been printed now, but I think we basically automated RC20 into it and then automated the format down. I almost forgot what it feels like to feel alive. Yeah, I automated some chorus in there. That was pretty much it. And then we just have this like reverse snare into this head. I almost forgot what it feels like to feel alive. That's pretty much it. Then we're kind of pulling in the same exact arrangement, I believe. So yeah, all of that stays exactly the same. This stays the same. The main big change is for the second half of this kind of pre-chorus verse B section. Over here, I'll kind of show you, we have it kind of continuing. We keep the energy up, but for this one, we bring everything down. So we strip out the drums. We put like these nice kind of shimmery bells. And all we did for that was remove the drums, put in this like chime hit from disco. And then we put in like an extra kick that wasn't so aggressive. That tonal down hit and then the synths kind of kept the same. We just filtered them out and then we just added this guitar. This kind of did most of the heavy lifting for this section. And it's just in guitar rig as well. Looks like it was this preset. There was probably some tweaks to it. Breath you hold. Here's the settings if anybody just wants to take a screenshot and copy that. Um, so without any extra post-processing, it sounded like this. Kind of got that cool, phasey 80s idea. And then I just put on mono to stereo because I wanted some width. And then put on some EQ and some extra uh, reverb. And this is really doing a lot of that lifting. It's a super bright plate, very, very wet, and it's just kind of spreading that out and getting it towards the background where it almost feels like this like airy pad. And then that's it. That's the only thing that changed. And then we've got this little vocal fill right here. And all that is, is kind of similar to what we did for that turnaround. I just filtered it out, put some RC20 on it to give it some like texture. And then I just chopped it up and glitched it with like 16th note chop. And I kind of automate the filter up so it kind of feels like it's coming in just a little bit, but I didn't want it to be like fully there in your face. It was more so just like a textural atmospheric thing. Chorus stays the exact same, and then we're going into this post-chorus right here that's lyrically what the pre-chorus does, um, but we kind of keep the full arrangement there. Yeah, nothing drops out. The only thing is we add a couple things. So we're going from this uh, right here. So vocals are still same thing, lead, lead left and right. Harmony left and right, harmony two left and right. Falling, I'm falling, don't act like I'm see. And then bass is the exact same. Main tweak comes from the guitar um, instead of doing this pattern. Dan played something different. So I'll let you hear that in full context. And then drum wise, we just added this really, really big kind of snare right here for some extra reverb. And then we just popped on like a halftime cymbal. And then we just did a tape stop on the vocals right here with Kilo Hearts tape stop. Probably seen me do it before if you watch the channel a lot. It's super easy. Literally just pop it on, set the stop time and the start time, and then just turn it off and on with automation. And 
that's pretty much it. Um, not too much stuff gets added. We just turn everything up a little bit to add that intensity. Um, we do have a couple little tom fills and stuff here and there. This is probably my favorite drum fill. And again, all that was like played by Logan, so did half my job. I just had to actually program it. And then for the outro, we're just kind of starting to bring elements off until the song filters out. Just have this bass pad that side chain to the kick. And then now we can go to the intro. We've got a couple elements there. And I think that's pretty much it. So we've got that main guitar. Just got like a eighth note or 16th note delay to kind of give it some movement. Um, and then it's just kind of filtered out. We wanted it kind of bright and thin so it didn't take up too much space. And then we've just got some extra guitars. So that main chorus guitar is kind of filtering in. And then we've got this little guy right here that's kind of like the counter melody guitar. And that's it. And then we've got a couple pads. So we've got this main pad right here. Just something I got in Omnisphere, filtered it out, put on some tremolo, and then just kind of automated some stuff here and there. We have this little swelling pad. And then this little whirling pad. And those kind of just create a little sound bed for that guitar to sit on. And so that's all in the intro. I think we just pull a couple of those things for the outro. Yeah, we don't even pull the pads. We literally just pull that counter melody guitar and that's it. So as you can see, this style is not too far off from just creating like typical alter alternative pop. The main key is that especially for like big choruses and stuff like that, you want to start to layer in some organic kind of live track, either samples or live track drums. Um, and then it's just super guitar dependent. And if you can add real bass in there, that also adds a nice little bit of a human touch. And then for synths and kind of guitar tones, you'll probably want to lead more to that kind of like 80s, you know, again, like Peter Gabriel, kind of Duran Duran, lots of chorus, lots of Juno sounds, lots of Jupiter sounds, stuff like that. I think it's going to get you 90% there. And then, of course, just having a good song at the core will be like the main component. But that's pretty much it. That is the entire project. And there you have it. That is the full project. We looked at every element that went into this song. As you can see, there is kind of this big blend of kind of rock element and pop element. And then you have to just kind of bring them together and figure it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I answered some of your questions that you might have had about the genre. And again, let us know if you have any questions in the comments down below, and I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. But that's going to be it for this video. And we will see you guys next time. If you want to support the channel, like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to head over to makepopmusic.com, you can check out all of our free and paid content over there. But until next time, much love everyone. Peace. It's already a quarter to midnight.